and I certainly would not want to be tackled by Ebenet Smith. Kickable one, see? Hello there, a very warm whistle watch welcome back to you. Now I thought I'd change things around a little bit this week, so a little bit less and a little bit more. Anyway, I've come back to my local rugby club, Pontebarem RFC. So let's go in, have a sit down, have a drink, and let's get into some of those Emirates fans questions. Well then, let's get into the uh, Emirates fans questions. Here we go. First one is from Stuart Smith. Well, Stuart's asked, question for Nigel, and obviously. Will you come out of retirement to ref the All Blacks versus Springboks 100th Test match if you have the opportunity? Do you know what? I think I actually would. I would love to referee because I've refereed the Springboks All Blacks about seven or eight times. It really is a special fixture and um, who knows? It could turn out to be like that game in 2013. Um, so yeah, uh, do you know what? I will come out of retirement. If World Rugby wants me, let me know. I eat banana skins. No, I don't. This is a question from I eat banana skins. What do you think is the biggest decision you've ever made in a game? Oh, now you're talking something. I think the biggest decisions you make in a game is if you have to give somebody a red card, particularly when it's in a, in a big World Cup match, for example, uh, like out in 2019. I had to give a red card to uh, Levanini from Argentina um, for a head-high tackle on Owen Farrell, I think it was. Um, and you know that when you give a red card, they are game-changing decisions. Um, but you know that that red card was probably going to have an outcome on the game because you knew then the 40 men. You can still win with 40 men. We've seen it happen, but it's a little bit more difficult. So yeah, they are the big decisions, and that's why you have to make sure that when you give those decisions, you are 100% you are correct, as you should do anyway in the game anyway. Good question, that. Bryce, when asked, when you watch a game of rugby at home, who do you yell at the most, the players or the referee? <laughs> the referee. If Wales are playing. No, um, when I'm watching Wales play, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm passionate, and sometimes you go, oh, ref! And, and then you remember, oh, hang on now, you know? I know how difficult it is. Um, so yeah, no, I don't really yell, but I, I do get excited when I watch a Wales game. I, I do get excited, I gotta say, because I'm a Welsh supporter. So, um, and I yell at, at the players if they make a mistake, and I even sometimes yell at the referee. Wayne Stoll has asked, would you rather get tackled by Eben Etzbeth or have to tackle Bundiaki? You're not giving me a very good choice here, are you? I wouldn't like to tackle Bundiaki, and I certainly would not want to be tackled by Eppin Edspeth. He's massive. I don't think I'd get back up. If I had to, I'd go and tackle Bandiaki. Well, I'd try to. I'd just probably let him pass. Right, now we've had a lot of rugby championship predictions come in. Michael Viseselo James. I hope I said your name right there, Michael. Well, not Michael, but the Viseselo bit. South Africa playing in a neutral venue at home against New Zealand will surely win it. Rick, I'd say New Zealand will win. I'd love the box to take it, but I watched the All Blacks win far too often to think they'll stop anytime soon. Mohamed Adam says All Blacks just too lethal. And Jaden Philander says All Blacks won't match the Springboks defence. I mean, no team right now can match the Springboks physicality or defence. This may be the best Springboks side after 2009. I tell you one thing, it is one of the games I think that everybody will be looking forward to watching. Um, New Zealand are always something special when they play. And as you said, the Springboks, probably the best side since 2009. Weather will play a part. If the weather's nice and dry, New Zealand. If the weather's a bit wet, ball slippery, South Africa will control the game maybe up front. It's going to be one hell of a contest. One hell of a contest. Do you know what? I'm going to go for... South Africa. Just. Just. Oh, it's nice to get outside and get some fresh air, isn't it, in sunny West Wales. I don't mean being a change being in West Wales, I mean it being sunny in West Wales for a change. Anyway, time for whistle watch. You notice that Argentina would have got penalised quite a bit in the Rugby Championship because they're in discipline when they're defending, particularly when they're defending malls late on in the game. Now, what happens when you defend a mall 
it's very, very difficult to stop a driving mall. It's very, very difficult. So teams tend to then commit quite a few offences in that mall. If you can come through the mall, if you can come through the mall, so you've got players uh, from both sides on either side of you, and you come through the mall and you can get on the ball, then you're perfectly legal. And what you see happening is people creep around the side. So what you can't do is, when you're bound in the mall, you must keep at least one arm bound on to another player in the mall. If you detach that, so if you take your bind away, you're no longer part of that mall. And that means if you want to rejoin that mall, you have to go back behind the last player in the mall of your own team and bind on to him to rejoin the mall. So malls are very, very difficult to defend. Uh, and that's why you tend to see a lot of penalties given away. And that's what Argentina were doing in the mall when they were breaking their bind, coming in from the side, swimming around rather than trying to defend going up through, through the middle. Now, a lot of you think that the referee doesn't know what goes on in the scrum. Now, maybe some referees know a bit more than others do, and that comes with experience, of course. Um, but in general, referees will have a checklist for what they look out for in, in, in a scrum. Um, so some of the common things in the scrum where a referee will look out is, is on the setup um, and the bind. Uh, also, if you're hitting low or driving down or pulling down or dropping your bind or taking your bind away, then that is an offence. So believe me, referees do know what goes on in the scrum. Uh, sometimes they don't, and that's why sometimes you have a reset. Uh, well, I, and I've refereed a game before where scrum goes down, thinking, well, I, I don't know who collapsed that, or everybody caused the collapse, and then you reset. But once you identify the issues, that's when you will see a referee giving a penalty. So if you're changing a bind in the scrum and you cause a collapse, you're probably going to get penalised. OK, time for another memory test. Now, I've been given a map here of World Cup momentous moments. And I've got to find out where did it happen. Number one is five metre line, a couple of metres in front, about four metres from the touch line. Number two then is on the 22 metre line, a couple of metres in. Number three. It's a kickable one, see? Would it be? Number four is here, just in the, just in, in goal. Okay, and number five then is just a little bit back, inside here, inside the 15, and just short of the halfway line. 1995 semi-final, over Mike Cat. That is number one. Okay, so Johnny Wilkinson's drop goal is number two. Uh, Joe Stronsky's number three. Karl Heskef. Yeah, and that was number four. Spot right in the corner. What a hell of a game that was. That really did set the World Cup up. Since um, Brooks drop goal would have been number five then, because it was way out. Oh, I think I did okay there, actually. How did you get on? Let me know. Well, there we are. That's Whistle Watch for another week. Hope you enjoyed the little visit to Ponaberem Rugby Club. We'll have a little break now, but we'll be back in two weeks' time. Um, don't forget to send in your questions. Keep them coming. I really do enjoy answering your questions. Don't forget to subscribe like and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss anything oh and by the way come to ponabere and rugby club first rounds on me